Hello everyone, my name is Zach LeBaron and I am a third year medical student at the Creighton University School of Medicine, Phoenix Regional Campus. Today I will be presenting a case report on a bicornuate uterus and discussing the diagnostic imaging and features. History. A 31 year old female, G0, with no significant past medical history presents to the clinic for evaluation of infertility. She and her partner have been having unprotected intercourse for the last 12 years and have been unable to conceive. Use of over-the-counter ovulation kits have not worked. Semen analysis of the partner was unremarkable. She reports shorter menstrual cycles of 20 days with occasional bleeding, and menses are 5 to 6 days long with moderate flow. She also denies signs of hirsutism. A transvaginal ultrasound was performed showing a heart-shaped uterus. Hysterosalpingography and a pelvic MRI were subsequently performed, and a diagnosis of a bicornuate unicolis uterus was made. Here, we see an AP view of the uterus during a hysterosalpingogram, uh, which was performed using dilute contrast and shows the late filling phase demonstrating a pacification of the right uterine cornua, depicted by the yellow arrow, with free intra-abdominal spillage only from the right fallopian tube, shown by the white arrow. It is notable that upon performance of the HSG, the gynecology team visualized only one cervix. Here we see a coronal T2 weighted MRI without IV contrast through the pelvis, demonstrating two separate uterine horns shown by the yellow arrows with a 1.3 centimeter fundal cleft shown by the white arrow, normal endometrial thickness of three millimeters, in normal junctional zones bilaterally, depicted by the blue arrows. Here is a coronal reformatted T2 WI movie clip of the pelvis, showing a uterus with two symmetric horns, separated by a fundal cleft, which measures 1.3 centimeters. The two horns are shown to converge at the lever level of the inner cervical os. Final diagnosis, bicornuate unicolis uterus. A bicornuate uterus is a class 4 malarian anomaly characterized by incomplete fusion of malarian ducts, leading to two uterine horns. These horns are usually anatomically symmetric and possess a fundal cleft deeper than one centimeter. The central myometrium between the two uterine horns can extend into the internal os, as seen in this case, creating a bicornuate unicolis uterus, or to the external os, creating a bicornuate bicolis uterus. In diagnosing a bicornuate uterus, it's important to consider the top differential diagnoses, first being a unicornuate uterus. However, a solitary normal uterine horn would be depicted. A septate uterus, which is the presence of either a fibrous or muscular septum that can completely or partially divide the uterine cavity into two. It occurs when the fibrous septum created between the two malarian ducts fails to regress. It also has a fundal cleft, but it's less than one centimeter, a key distinction from a bicornuate uterus. Finally, a uterus didelphus is two independent uterine horns with two separate cervices. A deep fundal cleft is also noted on imaging, along with commonly a transverse or longitudinal vaginal septum. <clears throat> Regarding imaging, ultrasound is usually the best initial diagnostic step due to its inexpensive cost, rapid results, and reproducibility. It usually shows a caudal fusion of the uterus with two separate cavities, a fundal cleft of more than one centimeters deep, and often an angle between the two cavities of greater than 105 degrees. Hysterosalpingography can also be used, and it provides visualization of the duplicated uterine horns along with the cervix. The uh, important thing to note is that it lacks the sensitivity to distinguish between a septate uterus and a bicornuate uterus since the uterine fundal contour is not usually visualized. MRI then is the gold standard for diagnosis. It allows for a clear visualization of the deep fundal cleft and can evaluate the intercoronial uh, corneal distance. This is crucial in delineating a bicornuate uterus from a septate uterus and should be performed prior to any procedural solution. Clinical relevance, prognosis, and treatment. Correctly diagnosing this uterine anomaly is crucial for providing the correct treatment. Most individuals with the bicornuate uterus will largely remain asymptomatic, but abnormal bleeding isn't uncommon. Relating to pregnancy, a bicornuate uterus is not associated with a decrease in fertility. 
However, after conception, there are increased rates of recurrent miscarriages in the second trimester in premature birth. Once correctly identified, a bicornuate uterus, there are therapeutic options that exist that increase the chance of having a successful conception and delivery. The use of a transabdominal metroplasty has been shown to increase the survival rates of the fetus from 0.0% to 92.8% in patients with recurrent miscarriages. I hope this presentation has been insightful for you, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen. Thank you.